Hello, Namaskar, Vanakkam. With the photographer, that's part of the treasure chest, ICSC class 10 English literature syllabus. I hope you have already seen the short video that I did in which I explained the themes of this particular story, talked about the characters and what is it that we are essentially in for as far as this short story is concerned. So please do have a look at that short video because it will help you understand this particular story better. In this video, I'm going to do a line by line, word by word explanation of this entire story so that it's easy for you to attempt any questions and also thereafter look at the uh, attempt any questions and look at the larger thematic uh, questions that this particular story raises as well. So let's get straight into the story. Okay, so this is an image generated about the photographer. As you can see, uh, this particular, this is a story about two characters, the narrator written, I mean, in first person account and then the photographer. So this image will help you kind of get an idea about the kind of person we are talking about in this short story. Now, it starts by, I want my photograph taken. I said, the photographer looked at me without enthusiasm. Now, this particular line is important because it is telling you about the narrator's first impression about the photographer. He looked at me without enthusiasm. Please mark this as a key phrase. It instantly tells you about the photographer's temperament, handwriting keeps going for it because I have to hold this pen in a particular slant and that kind of upsets my handwriting. It tells you about his disposition and temperament. Okay. He was a drooping. Now he describes his physical features. He was a drooping man in a gray suit. Gray again kind of, you know, conveys a sense of dullness. Okay. Slightly insipid kind of nature. Insipid again conveys the same thing, you know, not someone very bright. With the dim eye of a natural scientist. Now, this is an important phrase. All these are important key phrases. Please mark them either in your book or write them in a separate notebook. Now, this particular phrase paints the picture of the photographer as someone who is extremely observant, when you say natural scientists, scientists are known to have an eye for detail. They look at the minute things in great detail. So it gives you a sense that he's extremely analytical, extremely observant, right? It's like a scientist who is studying a specimen, for example, you know, in a biology lab, right? But at the same time, the use of the word dim eye, it kind of also conveys that this, while he's observing, that observation lacks any kind of warmth. It is not friendly in nature. It does not have any kind of an emotional connection, right? It's not friendly. It doesn't have an emotional connection. It is not something which makes you feel wanted. It doesn't make you feel liked or loved. Or, you know, uh, there is that kind of a friendly connection is not established. So it kind of gives you a sense of a bit of an odd behavior as far as the photographer is concerned. Understood. But he says at the same time, but there's no need to describe him. Everybody knows what a photographer is like. He says, that this is how most photographers seem to be like. So the narrator seems to have met some other photographer who is also a bit like this, peculiar, slightly odd. So he says there is no really need to describe him. I mean, in more detail than this, because he thought this was the most peculiar part of it. The other parts are like what all photographers look like, right? So there's really no need to understand because I'm sure you know what a photographer really looks like. Now, uh, the other important point that I want to highlight 
is that there is an element of humor out here you know you don't need to this thing you know everybody knows what a photographer looks like because photographers and i have known many photographers uh people associated with the audio visual medium are generally known to be very warm people because they keep trying to talk to you trying to amuse you in order to get the right kind of expression right so when you say that he was a cold detached kind of a person almost resembling a natural scientist that makes the comparison seem very ironic very odd and therefore a bit humorous okay so that's how the element of humor is injected out there he said sit there he said and wait i waited an hour now that seems a little strange because nobody in the photo studio would normally uh, make you wait for an hour uh also let me add one more thing that you know the 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 narrator is also assuming that most people would be familiar with the image and the personality of a photographer right so it kind of creates a sense of familiarity with the theme the topic of the entire uh, story itself with the photographer is the title itself of the story right so uh it kind of allows when he says that you know everyone knows what uh, a photographer looks like is like so it allows the reader when he says that line to me in my mind i am also creating the image of a photographer so in that sense the character is universalized you know everyone all of us have gone to a photo studio at some point or time or the other to click a passport size photograph to fill in for some application for an examination etc etc or to apply for a passport so it makes the photographer relatable to the reader now sit there he said and wait i waited an hour i read the ladies companion for 1912 the girls magazine for 1902 and the infants journal for 1888 so he seems to have a stack of books running past behind i mean running into many years right many old copies i began to see that i had done an unwarrantable thing in breaking in on the privacy of this man's scientific pursuits with a face like mine now first thing waited for an hour what does it convey what does this convey it conveys that the narrator is an extremely patient kind of person okay the second thing that it conveys is that the photographer is not bothered he is not bothered about keeping a customer waiting for one full hour right that's what is a negative trait in the photographer but it is the author who is feeling apologetic because he says that i felt i had done an unwarrantable thing unwarrantable means something which should not have been done you know something which was not warranted me something which should not have been done because he seen he feels that he kind of disturbed the privacy of this particular photographer while he was engaged in his work and his work for the second time he uses the word related to science so he feels that he's almost a scientist by his looks by his entire demeanor and he feels that are i intruded into his time and that also with a face like mine so you see even he is not completely confident about his own looks so he says with a face like mine so it means that he does not think very highly the narrator does not think very highly of his own looks so that's an important element that you need to bear in mind yes the photographer does later alter the way the photograph comes out however the narrator himself at least at this stage says that with a face like mine you know mere shakal ke sath ye kya shakal utha ke aa gaye kind of thing they say no very rudely in hindi it's a bit like that after an hour the photographer opened the inner door he said come in he said severely again you see this also conveys a slightly rude kind of disposition it conveys that the person is very grim by nature right i went into the studio sit down said the photographer 
There is no please sit down. I sat down in a beam of sunlight filtered through a sheet of factory cotton hung against a frosted skylight. So that's how the photo studio's inner room where the photograph would be shot is looking like. There is a beam of sunlight and that's kind of filtering through a sheet of factory cotton. So again, something maybe a little coarse, C-O-A-R-S-E, that is rough, hung against a frosted skylight. Now, um, the photographer rolled a machine into the middle of the room and crawled into it from behind. Now, the word crawled obviously suggests that it is a bit of a cramped kind of a space. There isn't much space for him to move around behind the camera. Naturally, he's almost crawling into it and obviously maybe putting that black cloth etc if it was an old time kind of a photo studio he was only in it for a second just time enough for one look at me so he's gone inside seen the subject and immediately comes out and then he was out again tearing at the cotton sheet tearing conveys a sense of annoyance that he is not too happy with what he saw through the lens and the window paints with a hook stick apparently frantic for light and air so he's making those kind of adjustments then he crawled back into the machine again and drew a little black cloth over himself what i told you normally they do that right you would have seen it in a photograph studio photo studio this time he was very quiet in there so you see also the narrator is very observant. He's kind of describing to you very, very minute details. I knew that he was praying and I kept still. Now, I knew that he was praying and I kept still. This statement lends a sense of humor. Hmm? But it's also very ironic because it's very unlikely that a photographer would be sitting there and praying before taking a photograph or while taking a photograph. So there's an element of what, there's an element of exaggeration uh, that also points to the narrator's awkward position because when the photograph is to be taken, you're almost like still with a smile on your face normally, right? So it's also, he's taking his own time and he feels that, Are, kar kya hai? Kya pray kar hai? Kya pratha kar hai? Kya? That kind of a feeling while he's trying to hold his position, maybe his breath, maybe his smile, maybe his expression, right? Uh, and talking about the photographer, praying also makes the entire line feel very absurd. So this is what is an example of uh, the author's very lighthearted kind of humor. Uh, the statement also reveals the unease of the narrator. You know, he's feeling very uneasy. I mean, why is he taking so long? It just needs to press the shutter and I'm done. Why is it taking so long? And he's kind of unsure about how he should react. I kept still. The fact that he says, I kept still. Holding the expression, holding the smile, holding, I mean, ensuring that he's not blinking, right? Lest the uh, photograph comes with his eyes closed, right? So, also he seems to be a little intimidated by the photographer who is not a very friendly kind of a person. So, he does not want to disturb him while he thinks almost as if he's inside praying. So he doesn't want to disturb the supposed prayers of the photographer. It highlights the narrator's timid personality. He's a little, I wouldn't say darpo, but he's a little timid. And his tendency to defer to authority. Because the person, because of his demeanor, has kind of established that, you know, I'm not a very friendly sort. So he, because he's a timid personality, he's kind of deferring to that authority. Deferring means uh, he's kind of uh, feeling in a slightly inferior position vis-a-vis -vis that authority. He's feeling as though that person is in a slightly superior position uh, and he should not try to make him annoyed in any way. Uh, that kind of a thing. And he's not very comfortable with this very awkward, strange kind of position. I hope I have made this elaborately clear. I've elaborated it on it a bit too much. So, in terms of the plot, 
this particular statement, I knew that he was praying. How would he know? I don't know. I knew that he was praying and I kept still. So it kind of creates a sense of suspense. You would wonder why, is he, why does he think or why does he know that he was praying inside? When the photographer came out at last, he looked very grave. Grave means very serious. At the same time, you know what a grave means in context of death, right? So it does not give you a good feel. You first say he was praying, then you use a word like grave. I wonder why. And shook his head. The face is quite wrong, he said. The face is quite wrong. So the word grave has a slightly ominous kind of tone. Okay. It also conveys that the photographer is a very serious kind of personality, very disapproving when he says that the face is quite wrong. I know I answered quietly. I have always known it. Now, with a face like mine, he said before, now he's saying, I have always known that the face is quite wrong. So he's agreeing with it. So you realize that the narrator is a very timid kind of personality. He does not stand up and say, how dare you say that the face is wrong? It's my face. I've come to take a photograph. Take the photograph the way it is. He does not say that. He sides. Side means, again, it's, it is a sign of extreme disapproval. I think he said the face would be better three quarters full. Now, uh, it's, it's a funny way of saying that the photographer wants a better angle of the face by turning the head slightly. Now, he says, I want a three quarter profile instead of a full profile. It means something like that. It also shows his obsession with technical perfection. But he obviously lacks understanding of human emotions by saying that the face is all wrong, right? To say that the face is quite wrong needs to be three quarters full as if, you know, the face is like a vessel, you are filling in something. You know, it's almost being said with the kind of phrases that he's using, the kind of vocabulary he's using. It's offensive and it's almost kind of, you know, equating him with a vessel. I'm sure I said enthusiastically for I was glad. I'm sure it would that it would it would be better if it was three quarters full. Um, I said enthusiastically. Now, what it conveys the way he the photographer puts it and also the narrator agreeing with it. The photographer's inability to communicate politely, to communicate effectively, uh, the very odd behavior of the photographer. For I was glad to find that the man had such a human side to him. How wrong could that could he be? He feels that the man is actually being very humane by saying it. Again, shows a very timid side of his. So he's kind of uh, going with all the very unnatural and impolite observations being made by the photographer. He's accepting all of that. He's accepting all of that even if he doesn't quite fully understand it. So would yours, in fact. And then he goes on to say, even Tumari Shekal would be better three quarters full. In fact, how many faces one sees that are apparently hard, narrow, limited, but the minute you get them three quarters full, they get wide, large, almost boundless in, and a sentence doesn't get kind of uh, completed. Okay, so he's trying to say that, you know, there are many faces which would kind of, you know, uh, not be okay, but the moment you shoot it in a certain manner, it would look better. But the photographer had ceased to listen, means he had kind of shut him off. He was not even listening to what this guy had to uh, say. It also reinforces this particular thing. It kind of reinforces that he is very brusque in nature. He doesn't care. He has gone on. He came over and took my head in his hands and twisted it sideways. That's what he wants, that kind of a profile picture. I thought he meant to kiss me. You know, he, he again misunderstands. And I closed my eyes. Weird. Not weird. Okay. But I was wrong. I was wrong. Weird I meant as in his reaction. Uh, but I was wrong. 
he twisted my face as far as it would go and then stood looking at it okay ki jitna twist kar sako utna kiya you know till such time that the neck would allow it he sighed again again showing disapproval i don't like the head he said then he went back to the machine and took another look through the lens open the mouth a little he said i started to do so close it he added quickly then he looked again the ears are bad he said droop them a little more as though you can really droop your eyes you're not an elephant are you thank you now the eyes roll them in under the lips i don't know like inside the lips you kind of roll them put the hands on the knees please first time he said please and turn the face just a little upward you see photographers have that habit they will always say look up like this you know it will not be like looking directly at the camera they'll say look up at like this for reasons i have never been able to understand and turn the face because they want to catch the light on the face but it makes the face look very awkward and turn the face just a little upward yes that's better now just expand the lungs so and hump the neck that's it now hump the neck means arch the neck forward like this okay and just contract the waist ha huh. and twist the hip up toward the elbow now i still don't quite like the face it's just a trifle too full trifle means just a bit too full so you see the detailing he's getting into every part of his body the upper part till about the knees he's getting into he wants the posture to be just about right for him to get the right photograph and then he doesn't like it okay this is the other image that created i swing myself round on the stool though here he is sitting on the stool that is on the chair or the stool that he was sitting on stop now he decides that i don't like what he's saying he's kind of condemning okay to an extent i agreed fine theek hai meri shakal itni badhiya nahi hai but if you keep on hammering at it i am not really going to be very amused stop i said with emotion hmm? but i think with dignity he said it emotionally but he also it was also a very dignified kind of voice this face is my face it is not yours it is mine i own it i have lived with it for 40 years and i know its faults okay i know it's not the greatest face but i it is my face i have lived with it for 40 years that's how we know the age and i know its faults i know it's out of drawing in the sense it is not of perfect proportions i know it wasn't made for me but it is my face maybe it was not made for me you know i could have had a better face but then it is my face and this is the only face i have i was conscious now he's getting very emotional as he's saying it because he feels that he's being humiliated for no reason by the photographer i was conscious of he's getting emotional you know his voice is breaking i was conscious of a break in my voice but i went on such as it is i have learned to love it in the sense that it's the only face this is my face and because this is my only face i have begun to love it and this is my mouth not yours these ears are mine and if your machine is very narrow and he started to rise from the seat to hell with you how dare you insult my looks like this my face like this right so he's getting very emotional and giving it back to the photographer in as dignified a voice as he could tak he clicks the photograph the photographer had pulled a string the photographer the photograph had been taken i could see the machine still staggering from the shock so the whole machine was kind of kind of shaking as a result of that press of the shutter in this case maybe it's an old child photograph which is why some string may have been pulled i think said the photographer pursing his lips pursing his lips in like this in a pleased smile so the first time you see the photographer was pleased and it shows his 
obsession with taking a perfect photograph. Till now, he was very disapproving of his subject. But now, for the first time, he had what the narrator says, a pleased smile. That caught the features just in a moment of animation. Animation is, you know, you're not sitting there here and saying, okay, now let me tell you the story of with the photographer. Okay, this is part of your ICSC treasure chest textbook. If I start telling you, explaining you videos like this, you would press the stop button. I know that. I am naturally an animated kind of person, so it helps. But otherwise, also, you need to, and especially when it's a virtual medium, even in a classroom, physical classroom, you need to get the students interested. Isn't that so? So he says, I caught the features just in a moment of animation. Why was it animated? Because that was the point when the narrator was getting annoyed. And he was speaking in an emotional state of mind However, in a dignified manner. So he feels that while he was expressing himself, his angst, his anger, the fact that he was upset at the photographer's reaction, the photographer thought that he had caught the right expression, the right animated kind of expression. Though I know it for a fact that uh, if you go for um, a visa photograph, especially to the USA, the photographer will tell you, do not smile. Do not smile. They make you take your face specs and do not smile also. You have to have a very stoic kind of expression. So I said bitingly, pictures, huh? you didn't think I could animate them, I suppose. But let me see the picture. So he says that, ah, features? Um, I mean, what features? You thought I could not animate? You think I was a very dull kind of a person? Anyway, let me see the picture. No, no, there is nothing to see yet. I have to develop the negative first. So an old style photo studio. Come back on Saturday and I will let you see a photo proof of it. On Saturday, I went back. The photographer beckoned me in. Beckoned me in means he made him come inside. He made him come inside. Which kind of is a little more welcome than the first time where he made him wait for one hour. You know, he just said, sit there and wait and called him after one hour, right? This time he kind of called him inside. I thought he seemed quieter and graver than before. Graver means more serious and more quiet than before. Okay, this is more serious. I think too there was a certain pride in his manner, in what he had managed to achieve with the narrator's photograph. So he kind of sensed that he was feeling good about what he had managed to do, right? So it all kind of conveys the pride that he takes in his work. He unfolded the proof of a large photograph and we both looked at it in silence. He took out the photograph. Is it me? I asked. So you see, right from the first impression, he thinks he is your photographic. Yes, he said quietly, it is you. And we went on looking at it. The eyes, I said hesitatingly, hesitatingly because it shows that he's still a little intimidated and he's a little hesitant about not rubbing him the wrong way. You know, he doesn't want to get on his wrong side. The eyes don't look very much like mine. Okay, they're not looking like mine. Oh no, he answered, I've retouched them. They come out splendidly, splendidly don't they? Ki usko touch up kiya hai. Fine, but surely my eyebrows don't look like that, are not like that. No, said the photographer with a momentary glance at my face. He looks at him and said, no, the eyebrows are removed. We have a process now, the Delphi, for putting in new ones. So he says that there is a new kind of a process with which you can remove the uh, I mean, the old one and put in new ones. Now, Delphi is not a term which is usually associated with photography. So it seems to have been made up by the author out here. Uh, a fictional process the photographer claims to use. Okay. So it was very obvious from the manner that the photographer is in love with his craft. You know, when he says, don't they? Aren't they looking good? Don't they? It's a rhetorical question. He expects that the person will say, yes, they do. But this guy, no, he is not very happy with him, with it, right? 
you will notice here where we have applied it to carry the hair away from the brow, eyebrow. I don't like the hair low on the skull. So he's saying, I don't like it. Tumko kisne hak diya yaar? Who gave you the right to decide whether you like the hair on the skull or not? Right? So he says that I didn't like it. So I removed it using this particular process. Oh, you don't, don't you? He's also asking him a rhetorical question. And he's now getting a little annoyed. No, he went on. I don't care for it. I like to see, get the hair clear back to the superficies and make out a new brow line. So he says, I want the hair to be moved back and then I will make a new eyebrow. What about the mouth? What about the mouth? He's, I said with the bitterness that was lost on the author, the photographer. Is that mine? He said, what about the mouth? And now he's getting very sarcastic and bitter. He's angry now. Okay. So you see the temperament changing. Every time, initially he's a little timid and then the photographer irks him, irritates him so much that his anger starts coming out. It's adjusted a little. Yours is too low. I found I couldn't use it. Hello. Hello. As Sadhguru would say. Hello. The years though, I said, strike me as a good likeness. They're just like mine. Okay. Kaan to mere jaise hai. Yes. That's so, but I can fix all right. That all right. Now, let's go. We change kar sakta hon. We have a process now called the sulfide for removing the ears entirely. And then he can recreate the years. That's what he's trying to convey. Sulfide again, like delphide. I will see if, and this time, like last time, the photographer was not uh, cut him off. This time, he cuts him off. Listen, I interrupted. Drawing myself. Eight minute. Huh? Where is it? Ah, okay. He says, listen, I interrupted. Drawing myself up means he's kind of summoning all the courage. Okay. And animating my features to their full extent. So he's very animated at this point in time. And speaking with a withering scorn. Withering scorn suggests anger and bitterness. Okay. Usko gussa aara hai. That should have blasted the man on the spot. Because he's getting so angry that he could have, that anger could have, that scorn could have blasted the man on the spot. Listen, I came here for a photograph, a picture, something which, mad though it seems, would have looked like me. You may think it is mad, but it would have looked like me. I wanted something that would depict my face as heaven gave it to me. Okay, so he's kind of making a connection that heaven is what gave, gods gave this face to me. It's a humble gift that the gods have given to me. I wanted something that my friends might keep after my death so that they can reconcile to my loss. You know, ki, okay, hamara dost tha, he died. But now this photograph does not even look like me. You have altered it completely. It seems that I was mistaken. What I wanted is no longer done. Go on then with your brutal work. What you have done is murdering my face. It is brutal. What you have done, this is an important key phrase. What you have done is brutal. He's using very strong words. Take your negative or whatever it is you call it. Dip it in sulfide, bromide, oxide, cowhide. He's kind of trying to rhyme it. Cowhide means leather made from the skin of a cow. But here he's just kind of rhyming it. Sulfide, bromide, oxide, cowhide. Anything you like. Remove the eyes, correct the mouth, adjust the face, restore the lips, reanimate the necktie and reconstruct the waistcoat. Coat it with an inch of gloss, you know, make it more glamorous. Shade it, emboss it, you mean kind of give it a layer of something decorative. Gild it means cover it with gold till even you acknowledge that it is finished. Then when you have done all that, keep it for yourself. I don't need it. And your friends, they may value it. They may value it. To me, it is but a worthless bauble. It is but ka matlab. It is only a worthless bauble. Worthless bauble. Bauble describes a small, cheap ornament. A small, cheap ornament. 
piece of jewelry, but it's a very small and a very cheap, not an expensive ornament, which has very little or no real value. Worthless emphasizes the narrator's complete dissatisfaction with the photograph. He does not consider it to be a valuable representation of his personality, of his face, of his looks, and therefore he considers it completely useless and completely unimportant, right? I broke into tears and left. He completely broke down. He was so animated, so emotional that he broke down into tears and left that photographer's photo studio. So why is the photograph considered worthless? Because it's not an accurate representation of the way the narrator looks. Because the photograph does not resemble him at all. The photographer has retouched it, recalibrated it excessively using different devices. And he has altered it to such an extent that the photograph is completely unrecognizable as the photographer, as the visual representation of this 40-year-old narrator. He feels, the narrator feels that he has taken away all his unique characteristics. So he has, as a result, this is an important phrase that you should use. He has lost his individuality in that, in the photograph. In the photograph. Okay. He wanted an accurate representation so that his friends could remember him from the photograph after his death. But what he has given it, given him looks nowhere like his real person. So the worthless bauble, obviously one of the most important phrases used in this particular story, it underlines his complete disillusionment, as I said, with the photographic's, photographer's work and the photographic process. So what it underlines, as I explained to you in the first video, is the need for authenticity. He, what is real is always more valuable and it is, and whatever is altered and artificial is like a worthless bauble. So you need to take a call whether you want the real person or you want a worthless bauble. Okay, so that's what it talks about. So it, it talks about uh, the individuality versus what this guy is representing society to an extent. The society expects you to look like something. At a larger level, if you look at it more philosophically, you are something like this, but the society expects you to look like something different. Now, whether you would want to change yourself based on what the society wants or whether you say that this is how I will be and this is the way I will continue to do because I feel this is my individuality. You understand? So that's another way of looking at this entire story. So uh, the third theme which you need to be mindful of is also the theme of power dynamics. Okay, the theme of power dynamics. See, what I will do is closer to your examination, we will be putting out test papers in which many of these question and answers in the test papers will be discussed. But the theme of power and our SW success test papers are always a huge hit. The theme of power dynamics, the, you know, the power equations between the photographer, he's intimidated, then he gives him a piece of his mind, then he leaves, then he comes back, again he's a little timid, but then when he sees his photograph altered so brutally, he decides he can't take it in. And he gets very emotional, breaks down and leaves that photo studio. Okay, so while it is, it makes use of lighthearted humor, it also delivers an extremely important message uh, that we need to uh, bear in mind uh, that it's very important to be the real you in life. And that's the largest uh, question that you need to ponder over. This could be a four mark question in your examination as to what is the larger message that a story like the with the photographer gives to us. Okay. I hope the story is absolutely clear. I've explained every word and every line out here. So I don't think there should be any doubts. As I said, the SWA success test papers towards the end of the year, closer to your examinations, will help you prepare uh, for the questions and answers in a much better manner, both MCQs as well as the long format question and answers. Thank you very much. Tata. Bye-bye. God bless you.